Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be starting kind of midway through the install of the server. Uh, we're going to be setting up a brand new server to go over to the data center. And this is going to function as a kind of offsite backup to one of my primary servers that are run here at the primary site. Um, this other server is going to be server number nine in my, I guess, environment. Um, and this is going to function as a backup server for everything at the data center. So any server at the data center will back up to this. This server then will back up to Azure. We take a look here. We have the server right here. This is a Dell Power Edge R510 server. Take a look here. Uh, it was a good deal from Amazon. It's got, it was 500 bucks and it's got three terabyte drives filled in every slot. So we've got a total of 36 terabytes of storage on this thing. Um, pretty good. I popped in a 10 gigabit card here on the back, as you'll see. Pop that in right there. It's got two gigabit NICs uh, in a iDRAC Ethernet port as well. So right now it's going through the installation. I don't know why the keyboard's not working. I'd like to cancel the update. Whatever, can't cancel it now. Yeah, this server kind of is going to be somewhat of a clone of this server right here. And that one's got about 86 terabytes, give or take a little bit. But this one is going to get some data from the other server. Uh, just a little bit of data it's going to get from that one. Um, but primarily it's going to be focusing on backups for the data center. Um, there's a few different folders and stuff I'd want to back up from this server as well, just because I don't want to lose them. But um, like I said, primarily this new server is going to function as um, backups for the data center equipment. So then now that we've done all that, we can move on to the configuration of the server, uh, which is going to begin with um, getting Ubuntu installed, which is almost installed. Then we're going to install our clone. Okay, so the front USB stopped working for whatever reason. So I'm going to just continue using the back USB now. We just unplugged the USB drive that we used to install Ubuntu. And now we are just waiting for this to reboot. We'll get this fired up into Ubuntu and we'll take a look here on Termius and go from there. I do want to make note that I did try Ubuntu 24.04. Not sure if it's driver limitations or the server limitations or what the case may be, but um, that was not working on the server for some reason. Uh, so it was something with cloud init at the beginning and something with caching MD5s, some plugin or something wasn't running. Um, so that's why we switched over to Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. I realize we are kind of near the end of that long-term support cycle, but for now, I guess it's going to be fine. Eventually, once 24.04 is less buggy, we can switch over to that. But um, I guess for now, it's going to work on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. Okay, so we're going to do the default Ubuntu setup that I normally do, as well as install our clone, which is going to be super useful in kind of facilitating the backups and the connection to Azure. Instead of using the Azure utility, the CLI utility, I never got that to work because of authentication, but using the R clone, I was able to get an API key or something from Azure. I forget how I did it. It was something like that. I added that as a storage option to R clone, and I can just run normal commands. Um, normal R clone commands to upload my stuff to Azure. Okay, so first of all, we're going to run sudo space vi sudo. Uh, this is going to essentially give us, I entered the wrong password. This is going to give us admin privileges without entering it in every single time. So we're going to go up here at the bottom of the file and add our username and click or type in all equals parentheses all colon all no pass wd all command or control x while I enter we clear this now we can run sudo dpkg dash reconfigure tz data now we're going to set the time zone this is going to open up a new screen we're going to go to us and go to our time zone inside of the us um, clear this out again um, next we're going to sudo apt update dash y and, and sudo apt upgrade dash y um, sudo apt full upgrade dash y and sudo apt auto remove dash y so it's going to do the full update full upgrade and automatically remove packages that we don't need um, it's going to do all this and then we'll be ready to continue with the R clone installation all right so now that that's installed we're going to run the sudo apt install wow that looks weird install zip unzip R clone I have a bunch of other ones on my GitLab repository I'm going to open this up here another window um, I'll do this really quickly, but I'm going to walk through kind of what I do. So I have this script that I have on my GitLab, and basically it's like a general install, but it's all of the apt packages that I normally use, um, especially for a bare metal Ubuntu instance like this. So I'm going to paste this in here. We got Redis Tools, Speedtest CLI, Bridge Utils, NFS Common, iperf 3 Traceroute, Btop, Samba, Zip, Unzip, Resolve Conf, WireGuard Tools, WireGuard, QEMU, KVM, Livert, um, Livert Clients, Vert Manager, and Screen. So those are every those are all the packages that I normally use, I guess, on a regular basis. 
Um, I'm also going to install KVM. I just remembered, sorry, I'm going to make this quick. Um, I'm also going to install KVM to the server. That way I can do some virtualization on the actual server itself. Um, I did not plan on this taking this long. Apologize. It happens. Okay, so we're about 20%. I'm going to skip ahead till this is done. Okay, so now that those are installed, we're going to paste in this command, which is going to give my current user account libvirt, um, I guess, access without sudo. And we're also going to install all of these packages to get vert manager installed, which is going to let us do some KVM things, KVM virtualization. Finally, on that topic, we're going to run this command, which is going to open us into the KVM file. We're going to add this config to the very end of the file. Control X, Y, enter. That is all for that. That was a lot of stuff. Let's kind of back up. Now we're going to install our clone, sudo apt install our clone. Not sure why our clone wasn't in my apt packages list, but we're going to run that command here. We're going to get our clone installed, and I'll actually even go through the config really quick. Um, I'm going to connect to my Azure virtual machine. I have a virtual machine that basically mounts the server. One of, it basically mounts that big server I have um, as a network share, and then that server essentially then um, also connects to Azure. So this kind of one, this one automatically backs things up from the server to Azure. It's kind of nice having it in a separate VM, just that way if I shut it down, I know my backups don't run, I can make sure the VM's running for my backups to run, etc. So I'm going to run history on here. I don't know if I can show you. Yeah, I can't show you this, unfortunately. Sorry about that. I'll make it quick. So if we go up back here, we're going to go... So it's going to be our clone config is the command that I want. So our clone config. Here we go. We're going to create a new remote. We're going to name it. Uh, we're going to name this bn-azure. Um, and we're going to look through the different options here. Um, I happen to know, I think, Azure's number one. Oh, I completely lied. Don't listen to that. Wow, this video is rough. Um, if we take a look here, Microsoft Azure Blob Storage. So it's going to be number 21. I use Azure Blob Storage for all of my storage needs because it's dirt cheap. It's like $0.00099 per gigabyte or something. It's absurd how cheap it is. So I'm going to go over here on Azure. Um, I'm going to go to Access Control. Um, and it's not in Access Control. Okay, so we just entered in the storage account name. And now we're going to grab the storage account key, which, to be honest, I have zero, oh, there we go, access keys. That's probably where it is. Um, over here on Azure, so we're going to grab the key right here. I'm going to have to hide this, and it won't even paste. Nice. Don't look at that key. Okay, enter a string value of the SAS URL, which I don't even know what that is. Oh, we're using the account key, so we're going to leave this blank. Use this local storage provider equals true. We're going to leave this at the default. And we're going to also say not edit the advanced config. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. So now we're going to quit. And now we're going to do our clone ls bn azure. Hey, there we go, guys. We did it. Okay, that was really rough getting that configured there. So essentially, I use the storage account key that I have in Azure. Um, in addition to the storage account name. So apparently with both of those different credentials, you can see here the account name, the account key. I was able to get the Azure share mounted. That was a little rough. I apologize for that one. But um, that's kind of how that went. Since we're here, I'm just going to pull up my config that I use here to back up my server. Okay, so this is my full command that runs, I think, a few times a week. Uh, to back up my Azure, back up my Proxmox stuff to Azure. So Proxmox has my server mounted as an NFS share, and then through the rclone sync command, we're using the access to your archive using the fast um, transfer, ignoring existing files, excluding hidden files, um, coming from this path on my server that I had mounted, like I said, as an NFS share, and going up to the Azure and the backup URL, including the date that makes a new folder for every single date. So I can go into Azure here. Um, into my storage account. I can't really show this, I don't think. Let me pull this up. I might be able to show it. Um, if I go into my containers here, my s folder here under backups, Proxmox, actually I can show this. We're going to show this. And then if I go down here to the different dates, so it looks like it's about once a month actually that they back up. I lied now, once a week. So it's the third of every month, it looks like, or second or third. I mean, in, in each of these different folders here is a full backup of all of my stuff. This is exactly what comes from the Proxmox folder. So um, that's kind of what we got here. The nice thing about this as well is that with the um, archive tier on Azure, you want to keep your data in there for 180 days, which is, I think, six months. Don't quote me on that. Um, but basically that's saying that with this date format here, I'll be able to tell 
that that in September I will actually be able to delete this folder because I don't need the data in it any longer. Um, I could delete all of these earlier, but I don't want to pay for early deletion fees, so I might as well just leave it in Azure. Um, it won't hurt to have extra data in there. It's cheap anyway. Doesn't matter to me. So um, right here, as you can see, it's the it's May, it's March, March 11th. Um, so I'll keep the data in there for a few more months, and then I'll delete that this coming September. So um, I would add an auto deletion. I don't know how that works yet. I'll figure it out eventually. Um, I'm going to pull up my cron job here. So at the bottom here, we have a few backup jobs. We've got this one that runs a few other files that I have. Um, but we also have this one right here. So this is the Proxmox backup file. As you can see, it runs the third of every month at 8, 10 p.m. Don't ask why. Um, and we're using Croninger here, um, running this Croninger job, then running this script. If you don't know what Croninger is, it's a nice way to monitor your cron jobs. There's actually a website, I think it's croninger.io. Um, and basically it shows you kind of a breakdown of each of your events, how long they last for events as in commands. So each of your commands that you run in cron and how long they last for, if they failed, etc. So it kind of outputs a log to a nice web format. It's super useful for debugging. It sends me an email if a job doesn't work right. It's free. It's amazing. You should check it out. Um, but that's about all for this video. So we fully set up this server. I I'm pretty much ready to deploy it in the data center at this point. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at these specs on here. So we got 29.8 terabytes, tibibytes, sorry. Um, what is that, 19 cores? It's kind of an odd amount. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 19. That's weird. 2.8 gigahertz. 128 gigs of RAM. I don't know why it's only 19 cores. Oh, sorry, 24 cores. They weren't all showing up. Sweet. So, a lot of cores, a lot of memory. This thing will be a beast. It'll be sweet. Pretty excited for this one. So, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Um, that's about all for this video. So, see you around in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.